TC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 19. Lessons 19, 20, 21, and 22 are video lessons. So the only information you're going to get is from the lecture. I'm going to start off by going to open up a browser window and put in www.cad-resources.com. In other words, you're going to the website and click on the cover of the book. And on the right hand side, we will see a bunch of icons and these will allow us to download the parts. Make sure you pick on the correct item. If you have an academic license, student license, make sure you pick the correct one and the commercial license is there too. So I'm going to select on the gear icon here and open it up. And I'm going to extract it. And I'm going to put it in my desktop. You can put it in the working directory that you want to go in. It's on my desktop. And next thing I want to do is I want to go and select my working directory and gear parts. OK. And I'll shut the panel. All right, so we're going to use this for an assembly lesson. So basically, select assembly. This is going to be the gear. Uh, we can use the default template. And you can check your filters, make sure everything is on. And so we're going to show all of our datums and all of our features at first, at least. Click OK. This particular simple assembly, you can see it here, is nothing more than a small, it's actually representing a gear, but the gear teeth are not showing. So this is really all we have to go on when we're doing our assembly, nothing else. And if we look at it closely, we'll see that the bracket, the purple item here in the middle, that's the one that we should bring in first, because everything is built off of that. So that'll be the parent component. So model tab assemble. We're going to do the bracket. Let's turn on our preview so we see what we're getting. So the bracket. Right mouse button. Let's put it at the default constraint. And let's turn this. So let's go over to our options, file options, model display, and select isometric. So there's our first component. And we do have all the filters on, so we'll be able to see the features of that also. So the next one is the bushing. So assemble, bushing, open. And we can put it in another window, but I'm just going to zoom up a little bit here. And what I'm going to select is the round portion of the bushing and I'm going to pick the inside of the hole here like so and maybe flip it and next I'm going to select the face here and the face of the bracket that looks good now it went in there correctly but I really want a third constraint. So I'm going to select this top flat portion. Put my cursor here, right mouse button. If yours came in on an angle, you can still just zoom up and select this. I want to pick the inside here. And I want to make them just parallel to each other. Like so. Facing in that direction. Little mouse button. third component is going to be the ring on the other side. So I'm going to turn this. And I think I'll turn off some of these datums. I don't need all this datum features. And take a look at it. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a ring in here. So assemble. Select the ring. Open. 
and I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to go to the inside round area and zoom up and put it in this groove. And then I'm going to select either side. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to select this side right here and zoom up and select this side. And I'm going to flip it so that it's on the out there. And at this point, I think I'll add another one too. So right mouse button, new constraint. And I'm gonna pick for orientation, this surface and this flat. And that one I'm gonna put as a angle offset option. And you see, you can actually move this to any place that you want. Let's put it off at a little bit of an angle. So there's our first, <clears throat> excuse me, three components. Control D. And the next one is going to be the shaft. So assemble. The shaft, open. And you'll see that the end with the, uh, the shortest end with the hole that's closer to the end is going to be on this side. So basically, I'm going to select here and here and then slide this. You can always flip it if you get it going in the wrong direction. And the next thing I want to do is have a another constraint and I'm going to use the end here and here. And I'm going to make this a distance and the distance is about I'll just do, see what we've got here. About two and a half inches, maybe less. Just put it in there, don't worry about it, we can change it. And if we want to have a third constraint, a new constraint, let's turn on our datums, our datum planes, and Let's select the datum plane down the middle of the shaft and then down the middle of the assembly. You can do this one here or we could do it at 90 degrees to it also, but it doesn't really make any difference. Let's see what happens when we do it. Placement angle and now we've added an angle now if you take this you can actually rotate it we'll leave it where it is so we're all set for the other components we'll try the arm here at the end so here's the gear and this is the crank i should have called it the crank open And again, I always start with the curved features that are going to insert into each other. And I really don't need all the data plane showing when I do this. I'm going to flip it like so. And the other constraint, I only need two here. I'm going to pick on the hole and the hole in the shaft and select coincident. Now, if I go over here to my placement and I uncheck hold control alt, I actually can turn this around to where it's close to the other side, like so. and then enable it. So it depends on which, how you want it to be oriented. Looks like we put it off to the side down here on this one. But I'm going to leave it. If you hold down your Control Alt key and use your middle mouse button, you can get a variety of changes on this, depending on where you put your cursor.
So control alt with a mouse button. Move it around and you'll see that it'll flip both directions or flip to the opposite side or flip back and forth on the shaft in one direction or another. So just play with that a little bit. All right, so let's leave that one like it is. Remember, we can always rotate this shaft because we put that dimension in there. And you'll see, I double clicked on the shaft and you'll see that the angle of zero is here and the angle or the distance is here because those are assembly dimensions. Okay, the next component is going to be the gear and it doesn't have any teeth. It makes it easier to regenerate. That's why we did it. And the shaft. And again, if you want to move this to the other side here, you can. And we're going to add these two and they're going to be coincident also. So again, what I've done this time is I've just gone straight to my control alt and depending on where I put my cursor, roll it around, it'll give me a variety of options. The other way, again, is to go to the placement option and disable that and then rotate it around manually. So control alt, rotate it around until it gets near the hole on the other side. Hard to find. There it is. eyeballing it. You can move it around. So let's see if it'll go to that one. It did. So it's smart enough to know if it gets close. That's what we want. So, check. Now, next thing is by the way, the colors are really bad on this. You should never use red. And uh, I'm going to go into my edit definition. You'll see that you should obviously never use this, whatever that is, gold, orange. All right. So I'm going to come over here and let's go to analysis and um, global interference. How about global clearance? And we'll see we have some sort of a problem going on in here. I'm not going to worry about the uh, the ring. That should have some sort of an interference anyway. So interference again, let's... Uh, you can see the interference, the only place it's interfering is this one. And again, don't worry about that because it's a ring that's put on there. So something seems a little odd here, though. Um, we have a lot of uh, space in here. I wouldn't want to be near this piece of machinery. So there's a gap. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with the size. So let's investigate that. Let's go up to our analysis measure, pick diameter, and select the shaft. And it comes back and it says it's, uh, oh, 0.669291. Well, never heard of anything being manufactured with those numbers. So something's wrong. I'm going to open up that part and take a look and see what's going on with it. So here's my part. Tools, model information. <clears throat> ah, parts in millimeters. So that's what's wrong. All the parts are in millimeters, but the assembly wasn't. So we have to go fix that. We're going to go over to our prepare model properties. 
<clears throat> units for it was inches because that was default and we're going to select the millimeter set and this is one of the few cases i tell people it's okay to convert because it's just an assembly offset dimension normally you will always pick the interpret click ok close close and <clears throat> let's double click here and now we see we have 57 so that's let's change that to 75 and regenerate so that's fine let's go and select our shaft <clears throat> excuse me let's do this first let's go back to our analysis and measure and diameter and pick and we see it's 17 the hole is 19 and the hole over here is 19 actually this one's even different 19.12 and the one over here 19 so they all should be 19 so you're going to have to go and change these but first thing we need to do is not really change the 19 let's change the shaft so let's activate the shaft and i just want to double click on it again and see where the dimensions are and we see that it's 17 and let's change it to 19 millimeters regenerate and reactivate the gear and let's go to our analysis global interference and we'll see the only place we have an interference now is with the retaining ring so this is a good lesson to practice your assembly skills you don't have to do any modeling here if you want to stick a pin in here that's fine put pins whatever you want to do to embellish the model is fine this completes lesson 19